to do with a called ISLM model. Okay, so as I was saying, we are going to do with a model called ISLM model. Okay, and you will bear with me that for the past three weeks, we've been dealing with some policies. Okay, so for the past that thing, two weeks from today, we dealt with fiscal policy, okay? And we established that fiscal policy talks about what happens in the goods market, okay? And last week, is it last week? No, last Monday, we did something about monetary policy, okay? And we said that it also talks about what happens in the money market. Okay, so today our goal is to simultaneously try and evaluate these two together. Okay, so we are going to show the equilibrium position for this monetary policy and the fiscal policy, or basically what happens in the money market and the goods market simultaneously. Okay, so at the end of this lesson or session, um, we are going to be introduced to the ISLM model, okay? And we are going to learn how to use this tool to analyze policies and economic shocks simultaneously in the goods market and the money market, okay? And we are also going to learn how to derive both the IM and the LM, um, IS and the LM caves, okay? As well as how to use this model to analyze policies. So this is our session objective. We're going to link the IS curve to the goose market and the LM curve to the money market. We are going to derive the IS and the LM curves and identify factors that affect the slope of both curves. We are going to identify the factors that will shift both the IS and the LM curve. We are going to use the IS and the LM framework to analyze the effect of fiscal and monetary policy on real interest rates, income, and other macroeconomic variables or indicators. So if we should indicate this in a key topic, okay, or in a key topic form, we are going to say that we are going to handle the IS curve and its derivation and LM curve and its derivation using the IS LM model for policy analysis. Okay, so that is basically the whole idea or the whole um, work for today. And this is our reading list, Abel, Benanke and Crusher session 9.2 to 9.4, we will see it there. And we are also going to use the Monetary Policy Committee, their report, to also explain what happens in the money market, okay? So that is the um, introductory stage of our lecture. Okay, again, let me check the number of people here. All right, 31, it's not good, but remove. Anyways, you know, we don't really have this lecture at 12. I went for a lecture, I just came, okay. So um, I'm sorry for shifting the time to this time. Maybe that won't happen again. And I also heard that today is our last day. That was what someone told me, okay. Our last day of meeting. So we, ha we had, I think, four more lectures to go, but someone said today is our last day. So maybe we'll meet when we meet. Okay, so now we are going to take this one by one. Now, the first one we are going to talk about is the ISK and its derivation. 
when we say IS curve, what do we even mean by the IS curve? All that we are saying is that the IS curve, okay, please, if my network starts misbehaving, alert me, okay, thank you. So all that we are saying is that with the IS curve, okay, it deals with what goes on in the money, uh, the goose market. Okay, so the IS curve actually denotes the equilibra condition in the goose market. Anytime we say goose market, basically all that we are trying to say is the market for goods and services okay so markets where goods and services are traded okay so the is curve actually denotes the equilibra in this goods market okay so that is what we have here now points on the on an is curve denotes the real interest rate and the income combination that constitutes an equilibrium in the goods market. Okay, so very soon we will understand how this is actually derived. Okay, so we said that in the simplification system, we said that we'll be in equilibrium when our output is equal to our aggregate demand. That is what we established in the simple cation system. Okay, so today we are just going to use this as an aid for our derivation of the IS and the LM curves. Okay, so now let's try and derive something here. I believe you can still see my screen. Yes, yes, please. Yeah, so I'm going to do some small quantitative stuff, okay? It's not really anything difficult. It's something we've dealt with already, okay? So we are going to just indicate how this ISLM case show in the money market, in the goods market, sorry. Okay, so... Okay, so we said that in the simplification system, we had our, um, let me annotate here. So we said that we have, I don't know, my pen is not working. Okay, so in the goose market, we said that um, for us to be in equilibrium, our Y needs to be equal to our AD. Okay, so we are going to just prove how or how we got the IS and the LM curve. Okay, that's basically what I'm coming to do here. So for us to be able to prove this, we are, not, we are going to consider an economy, okay, that is closed. So when I say an economy that is closed, we are just talking about economy with no net export, okay? With no net export. So we are saying that if that economy exists, then we are going to have C plus I plus G. Okay, so I want to make, because we are saying the thing is IS, I basically means investment and the S is savings. Okay, that is the meaning of IS. Okay, so I means investment, S means savings. So because of the name of the model, I would want to make I the subject from this side, okay? So if I want to make I the subject from this side, I'm going to group like terms, where I will get Y minus C minus G equals to I. Okay, remember we can bring the desired we can bring the desired, okay? Now, this is the equation for I. 
And what is left here is what we call the national savings. Okay, national savings. And this is our investment. Okay, so that is how we got the, so this will be like SI. Uh, so SI is just the same as I equals to S. So that's how we got the IS. Okay, now if I want to prove further why we call this side the national savings, it's very simple. Let me do that here. We said we have Y minus CD, okay, minus J equals to I D. Okay, so for us to get our savings, we need to take taxes from both sides. Okay, so if I want to take taxes from both sides, I'm going to get something like Y minus T minus CD uh, minus G equals to ID minus T. Okay, so because we want to make um, this I the subject, I'll bring the T. Okay. So I'm going to get something like Y minus T, okay, minus CD, okay, plus, so I'm bringing the T, plus T minus J equals to ID. Okay, remember we established in the simple cations um, model that when we have Y minus T, we call this the disposable income, right? The disposable income minus consumption will give us what? Please, what would this give us? Hey, are my people here? What would this give us? Seven. Seven. So we are looking at what? Yes. We have government revenue minus government expenditure. Okay, so if government, that, so we are going to get what? S government. And that is how we got, remember, we have positive T here, we have negative T here. So you know this gives us what? S private, this gives us what? S government. But we can take off this positive T and negative T. So we are going to be left with Y minus CD minus G. And that is what is here. That is why I said this side is denoted the national. Remember, just this, if I add this to, I get what the total savings or the national savings. So that is how we get the IS model. That is quantitatively how we get what the IS model, okay? Please, who is lost? Um, so please, I have a question. So assuming in exams, they ask you to do the derivation. Will you add the, will you do the derivation for the national savings too? Or you are just explaining to us? Okay, so in fact, in the, in the exams condition, if you do it like this, it's perfect. If only you understand, you or you would remember this side is the national savings. If only you would remember, we don't have any problem. But if you think you will get confused, when you get to this side, okay, when you get to this side, just take C from both sides and that will be fine. Okay, but if you leave it like this, it's also correct. Now, could you please go over the formula again? Come again. Could you please go over one more time? I should go over it again, right? Mm -hmm. All right, that's fine. Okay, so I'm just showing you how we were able to derive the ISLM, IS curve, okay, mathematically. So I said that in the simplications system, we said that our y is equals to C plus, so this will be our desired consumption plus our desired investment plus government expenditure. So we are considering what a closed economy. So we don't have anything like net export. We want to, you know, we want to make this formula look like IS, okay? So where I is equals to S. If that is the case, then 
I would want to group like terms. So I would be like, why this C will move? So we would have negative C D. Um, sorry. Okay, so this G will also move. We'll get negative G equals to I D. And I was saying that this side is the national income. But to prove this, let's take negative T from both sides. So Y minus T minus CD minus G equals to ID minus T. So if I want to make IS, then it means I have to move this T and bring it here, which will be positive. So I'll get Y minus T, okay, minus CD plus T minus G equals to ID. And I said this side to this side is, a, is private, this side to that side is as government. When I add these two, I get what? National savings. I get national savings. But because I have negative T here, I have positive T here, I can move this out. And I'll get Y minus CD minus J equals to ID. This simply means National savings is equals to investment. That is how the IS is derived. Is that okay? Yes, please. Thank you. Any other question before I move? Any other question? Okay, so what I've done here is what we have here. Okay, what I've done there is what we have here. So we have our YD, Y equals to AD. So we are considering a closed economy. Okay, so where our Y would be equals to AD. So we would have CD plus ID plus J. Okay, where we would want to group like things to get something like this. And that's what I've done here. So after that, if you want to prove, if you want to prove that this side is from both sides. Okay, so that is how it is actually derived. That's all. So that's the equilibrium market or goose market equilibrium condition is equals to YD equals to AD, which can be written as what? I equals S, that's the name IS. Okay, so we've done systematic way of getting this in the slides, which is basically what I've also done here. Okay, so going through the slides shouldn't get you confused. Okay, let me see what is in the chat room. All right. Hello, sir. Yes, Please, the Y, that's negative Y equals AD. Why is the Y having um negative or it's not negative? The Y. It's not negative. Yeah, it's just like it's not negative. Oh, okay. Okay. Is it this one? Yes, but I'm okay now. Oh, yeah, it's just like uh, a bullet. Okay, it's a bullet. Okay, so that is how, so are we all cool with how we get the IS? Because we are yes. going to on it. Okay. Now, what does this IS tells us? The IS curve tells us the interest rate and income combination, okay, that ensures that the goose market is in equilibrium. Okay, that ensures that the goose market is in equilibrium. Now, we are going to try and do this on a graph and i don't think i'm running right no all right so you know we are going to present this on a graph now 
you could recall from session four. Okay, you could recall from session four when we were dealing with this Cation systems. Okay, or when we were dealing with the uh, GDP calculations. Remember, we said that consumption basically, okay, is a function. So anytime you have consumption, then, or you have a consumption function, then you have a savings function as well. Okay, anytime you have consumption function, then you have what? A savings function. Why are we saying that anytime you have a consumption function, you have a savings function? We are saying that because we said consumption is negatively what related to interest rate and positively what related to disposable income. Let me break this down. When we say consumption is negatively related to interest rate, all that we are trying to say is that anytime interest rate goes up, consumption reduces. And anytime interest rate goes down, consumption increases. And that is what we meant by negatively related to the real income. Now we are saying consumption is positively related to, remember this is in two folds. This statement here is in two folds. The first one is what I just explained, okay? The second one is we are saying that consumption is positive related to disposable income. Remember, we have two uh, main variables here. We have the interest rate and the disposable income. The interest rate has a negative relationship, whereas the um, income has a positive relationship. When we say consumption has a positive relationship with income, what do we mean? All that we are trying to put across is that anytime your income increases, your consumption will also increase. Okay, so if I should, let's say, present this on a graph, what I just said for both of them, which won't be a matured graph, okay? We are going to develop this graph. It would have looked like the first statement that I said, consumption is negatively related to real interest rates, would have seen something like this. Okay, so there will be a downward sloping kind of curve. Then when I say consumption is positively related to income, would have seen something like this. So let's assume this is your income and this is your consumption. As you increase your consumption, your income will be increasing. You see that? Meaning as your income is increasing, your consumption will be increasing. Then let's say this is your interest rate, this is your consumption. As, look at something, as your, Let's say the initial one is here. As your income, your interest rate goes up, you see your, as this goes up, consumption begins to decrease. As this goes up, consumption began to decrease. As this goes up, consumption will be decreasing. That is why we are saying it's negatively related to what your interest rate. Now, that is what I meant by what I just said in the statement form, okay. Now, we also said that anytime our real interest rate increases, the opportunity cost or the opportunity cost of consumption or current consumption, okay, so let me take that English again. Anytime or an increase in a real interest rate increases the opportunity consumption current, okay? An increase in real interest rate increases the opportunity consumption. All that we are, that English is not really correct. That's why I'm suffering there. What we are trying to say is that if real interest rate increases, our opportunity cost of consumption increases, when we say opportunity cost, that's the best foregone alternative. So the best foregone alternative here is that we are going to decrease our consumption. Because interest rate is increasing, we want to put our money in the best alternative, which is what? Saving it. Okay, that is what that the English here wants to say. Okay, but forget about the 
think there is an issue with the English. Okay, so the best foregone alternative would be what? We foregone in what? Our current consumption. We foregone in our current consumption and saving. Okay, so you would see that when we reduce our consumption, we now would spend much money saving. Okay, we would rather be saving than consuming what? That money. Now, another thing you need to understand, don't forget these kind of terms. Consumption being negatively related to interest rates and positively related to income or um, when interest rates increases, our opportunity cost of consumption increases. Now, we are adding another one where we are saying that savings increases or savings has a positive relationship with what? Interest rates, meaning when interest rates goes up, okay, we save a lot. And when it goes down, we save less, okay? So let's put this also in mind or we'll revisit it. Okay, so another concept we, we spent time understanding is that we said desired consumption, which is the same as planned consumption, is negatively related to the real interest rate. What does this mean? Meaning last week we said that if um, interest rate goes down, instead of people saving now, they would want to, or instead of businesses saving now, they would want to rather what? Invest because interest rate is low. And when interest rate goes up, okay, when interest rate goes up, they would rather would want to what? Save. Okay, so what we are trying to say is desired investment has a negative relationship with what? Interest rates. Okay, so when interest rates goes down, we would increase our, say, our investment. And when interest rates goes up, we would decrease our investment. Are we okay up to this point? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so that's basically what we've done here again. An increase in the interest rate, okay, increases the opportunity cost of consuming today. Hence, increasing what? The level of savings. This English is what I was suffering here. That's what they wanted to write. And I think there's a typo. It will be corrected. Okay, so when interest rates goes up, the opportunity cost of consuming today increases. Okay, hence increasing our savings. Now let's try and derive this on a graph. Okay, so if I want to derive this on a graph, before I show you the graph itself, let's try and do this manually. All right, so in fact, I need a big space. So I would want to share my white screen, even though I know, let me share my white screen. All right, so now this is basically what we are trying to say. So derivation of ISK. All right, so let me underline this carefully. So how do we derive this? Remember, we are in the goods market. And we said that the IS cap tells us the interest rate and the income combination. Okay, the interest rate and the income combination that ensures that the goods market is in equilibrium. So if I want to draw a graph like this, so with this, we need to graph all the time. For the derivation, we need to graph. This will be our origin. Okay, so this is going to be our savings investment line. This is going to be our interest rate. This will be our interest rate. This is going to be, some people would say income, others will also say output. Okay, so let me use, to be consistent, let me use output, where we would represent using income, which is why. Okay, so 
if I want to graph this, first we need to get our first IS, okay? So this is our investment line. Remember we said investment has a negative relationship with what? The interest rate. So this becomes what? Our investment line, okay? And we said savings have positive relationship with what? Interest rate. So as interest rate increases, our savings also what? Increases. Okay, so we are going to call this, remember savings is a function of what? Income. Out of this, your income is what you would save, okay? So this is what we mean by, um, so this would be our first equilibrium um, rate or interest. So we said that, you know, we will, before we can, this is the initial equilibrium. So this equilibrium is going to denote something on this graph where we would have R1. Remember, we are striking this with respect to what income. So because income is on the horizontal axis, okay, because income is on the horizontal axis, we are not going to have a shift. We are going to have a movement along the same curve. Okay, so we are going to have something like this. Okay, where if we trace this here, we are going to get our Y1. Okay, so the IS, IS curve and the interest rate, this one gives us one point, okay, which is the interest rate point here. This one will give us one point on this graph. Okay, so let's assume that our income increases. Okay, when our income increases, we are expecting to save more. Okay, so we are expecting the line to be here. Remember, it can decrease. I chose to make it increase here. This can also decrease. So just calm down. If I trace this one here, we are going to get what? R2. This R2 is going to also create another point, which is R2 here on this graph, where we would see our income was increasing. And this is what we call the IS curve. This is what we call the IS curve. Remember, remember what is here, is both our savings and investment line. That is why I've denoted here S comma I. So this is our investment line. This is our savings line. Investments have negative relationship with the interest rate. Savings have positive relationship with the interest rate. So as savings, you see, you can see something. As this income is increasing, we are saving more, okay? And if this decreases, it means we will save less. Okay, so that is basically the whole idea here. So we are going to have another point. Okay, so this second equilibrium will give us another point on the ISLM curve. Okay, on the ISLM curve. So that is basically all about the IS curve. Now, why is the IS curve downward sloping? And this is why I actually increased my income instead of decreasing it. I, even if I had decreased it, I would have still it would have still shown a negative relationship with the interest rate. Okay. Now, why is this IS curve downward sloping? You can write this. Okay. The IS curve is downward sloping because in the goose market when there is an increase in equilibrium income, okay, when there is an increase in the equilibrium income, interest rate must fall to restore equilibrium again. Okay, so what I said is in the IS or the goose market, okay, in the goose market, when there is an increase, are we there? In the goods market, when there is an increase,
in our equilibrium income, interest rates must fall to restore equilibrium. So that's basically why. So the, if there is an increase here, the interest rates here must fall to restore equilibrium again. And that's what we had here. Okay. And that's what we had here. Up to this point, who is lost because we are done with the division of the ISK on a graph? So I did this actually step by step. Okay, now all that you need to know is in step, exam. Can you, can you show the interest rates falling to restore equilibrium using the graph? Which equilibrium are we talking about? The first graph or the one in the second? No, the second equilibrium. Okay, the second equilibrium. So you see income is increasing here. Yeah. And we are saying that when this income increases, this man must fall. Okay, remember, we said that this one creates another point on the IS curve. Okay, so let's assume we had initially we had Y1. Y1 now increases. Okay, and to show the increase, it means it needs to come down. So if we even we should take it backwards, okay, you will notice that there should, this is the investment line. There should be another line here. Okay, there should be another line here where we would say that, so you can see that our savings is not decreasing. Okay, we remember we said that when income increases, we save more, if you could remember. So that is why the savings is showing a bodily shift to the right. Okay, meaning savings is increasing. And as savings is increasing, you will see that interest rate is falling. Okay, so this is our savings. You see interest rate falling to create this new equilibrium here. Do you get it? Yes. This is everyone fine. Okay, so if we are fine, then, then I could go back and show you what we are doing on the slides. Okay, so now this is what we were showing there. All right, so we have our so we have two planes here. We have the left plane and the right plane. Let's take the left plane first. The left plane is made up of our investment line and our savings, which is a function of our income line with respect to the um, various interest rates. Okay, so of course I've told you in economics, when we are talking about equilibrium or a change in an equilibrium, position all the time you need to have your initial equilibrium which is the black line here okay well in the goods market we are going to be in equilibrium when our savings is equal to our investment and that was what we derived okay so our savings being equal to our investment gave us this r1 here okay and i said that this r1 here creates one point on what the is curve Okay, create one point on the IS curve. Now, we also said that assuming um, the only way our S1 or S2 would happen or S1 will move to S2 is when our income increases. Okay, so if our income increases, we are expecting to save more. So we, are, we could take it from the other side where our S1 would be here, okay? Or where, you let me use mathematical note. Um, our S1 could be here, okay? We could have used something like this, where we would have created a new line here rather than creating it here. So if it, would have, it had been created here, you would see interest rates here increases from 
R1 to what? R2. Okay, let me use the pen to write it properly. All right, so R2 here. Okay, but we just wanted to show, so meaning that if income, and remember, this is why one, so our income would have what? Decreased here. That's why I told you. So if income decreases, all the, I, the whole idea here is our savings also decrease. But we just took it from just one perspective that we are assuming what? An increase in what? We are assuming an increase in um, our income, okay? That is basically what we are saying here. Okay, so all that we are trying to put across here is that if our income increases, our savings will also what, increase, creating another equilibrium here. Okay, creating another equilibrium here. And this new equilibrium is going to create another point on the IS curve. So in exams, if definitely, I'll show you how this dynamics works. Okay, so that you won't just be disturbed in exams. If the question is about ISLM, just do your graph, two graphs like this. If you like, don't do anything here. Of course, you should know that the IS curve is sloping. Okay, all that you need to do is to do something like this. Depending on the statement, the statement will tell you whether we are increasing or decreasing. So let's say this R1. Okay, and let's assume you don't know what is going to happen. Okay, so if you don't really know what is going to happen, just when you do this, do this, just do this. Okay, when you do this, just trace this to this and trace it down. Name it Y1. Leave this on just as it is. Then ask yourself, we are now going to learn the factors that will cause internet has started misbehaving, I guess, right? No. Okay, then today is a perfect day. Okay, so you just trace it to this, trace it down, Y1. Ask yourself, now we will learn some factors that will affect or cause a bodily shift in this. So the examiner is going to ask you one of them. Okay, so let, let's say when there is an increase in government spending, is this going to cause the IS curve to shift upwards or downwards? So you should know very soon when we are done with it, you will know. So when you come here, all that you have to do is, if it is shifting upwards, meaning you are expecting this to move here. Okay, so you just do the other graph. Then you do it like this. We are expecting our income to fall and this should go down. Okay, so that is basically how this would work in the exams. It's not really anything difficult. Okay, it's not anything difficult. So just calm your nerves down. But if you don't understand anything here, just I'll let me I'll go over. I'm giving you like one minute to go to go. And see if you could remember this. Please, I have a question. I'm glad. Abby, I'm waiting. Okay, Sorry, please. Can you mute um, yourself for us? Is that? Um, I'll, please, have you continue. Okay, please. So I want you to explain how interest rates will affect income. Like how we're saying an increase in the interest rates will decrease income. I don't really get it. I don't remember saying that. Yeah, but the graph, the graph here is showing that an increase in the interest rate is is decreasing the um, income. Okay, so with this graph here, if I I know what you are trying to say, all that we are trying to put across here is that if income increases, it will cost your savings to increase. Okay, as a result of your savings, now this green line is what I'm talking of. You see, because your income has increased, your savings is also increasing. And your savings is the one causing the interest rate to fall, not your income. 
Please, do you get it? Yes, please. Thank you. Any other question? Please feel free to ask your question. Okay. All right. So if there is none, let's proceed. Now, let's see the intuition. So this is what we've done. This is the intuition. Okay. So how how changes in GDP affect the savings? Saving equilibrium, investment equilibrium. Okay. So we said that what negative relationship between what R and what? Why? Why are we saying it's negative relationship? And I think Abi, that's what you wanted to say. We are saying that there is negative relationship because you see, as this increase, as this income increase, it falls. Oh, who is that? Okay. As this income increased, it forced your savings to what? Increase, which caused what the interest rate to fall. Okay, so we are saying that if your income increases, your savings will increase, hence your interest rates will fall. And if income decreases, your savings will fall, hence causing interest rates will increase. So that's the whole idea about income having what a negative relationship with what your interest rate. So see, that's basically what we've done here. Channel why increases more savings fall in what the savings. Okay, fall in what are in the savings investment equilibrium. That's basically what I just explained. So this is the intuition behind what is. LM caves. Okay, this is the whole, the whole idea. So just understand the graph. Remember that remember, all we are trying to understand this by also understanding the dynamics of how this graph works. Now, if ask yourself if income should have increased, it would have been here. Let me use the pen to show it. If income should have increased, we are expecting something to be here. So if we had traced this down, forget, forget about my line, okay? We would, would have been expecting this to be the Y2. Now, if I'm here and I'm trying to move like this, what has happened to the R? The R is now increasing, which is what I just did, okay? So the R here is not increasing because of your income decreasing. Well, R here is increasing because what savings is what falling. Remember, there would have been what a new line here, which would be R S Y two. Okay, so that is the whole idea, or that is the dynamics of how the ISLM curve works. It's not difficult. Okay, it's not difficult. Now let's proceed. So we've done the derivation. We've explained um, why the IS is downward sloping. And remember I said that the IS is down sloping because in the goods market, okay, in the goods market, when there is an increase in what the equilibrium income, interest rates must fall to restore what equilibrium. And which is what happened here. When there is an increase here, this must fall. And this is falling because of what? A decrease in our savings. So that is the whole idea. Now let's learn about some factors that could cause our interest rate, or let's say some factors that could call, cause this one to have a bodily shift, okay, and this one to have what um, a movement along the same demand curve. This one is having a movement along the same curve because why is as at the horizontal level. Okay, so at this point, factors that affect the savings and the investment um, parameters, apart from income, would cause a bodily shift in this curve, in this plane. Okay, so factors that affect the savings and the investment line, apart from income, will cause a bodily shift. 
income is just because, because income is at the horizontal side. We are expecting a movement, a increase, in, a decrease in the interest rates. We didn't show any bodily shift as in drawing a graph here. Okay, sorry. As in drawing a graph here. Something like this. Okay, but rather, anytime there is a movement, let's say if it is here, we are expecting the line to be here. Anytime it is here, we are expecting the line to be here. That is the movement along the same demand, uh, the same ISK we are talking about here. Okay, so put that to in mind. Questions will make this better. So you can ask more questions. Okay, so as I was saying, anything other than change, than a change in Y, that changes the savings and what the investment market equilibrium are. Okay, so is curve shift this that is what i just said anything that holds that is other than changing what's why so anything that affect the is or the savings and the investment markets other than income will cause the is curve, uh, the investment curve to shift right or left so that's what i'm saying here okay now so let's use something like expansionary fiscal policy. Now, when we say expansionary fiscal policy, we are saying that this is where government increases its spending and reduces its what taxes. Remember, if government we have government um, savings to be something like this. Remember the formula we produce. We said government savings is this. Okay. So if government, let's say, this is Jane. Okay, okay, you let me go back. All right, so let's assume, so this will give us national savings. So let's assume at first, this was 200 and this was 50. We could be able to save what, 150. Let's assume government decides to increase this, okay, to let's say 150. Now, if government does that, we are going to now say what, 50. Meaning if we were on this graph, meaning if we were on this graph, okay, if we were on this graph, what do you think would have happened to our savings line and our, invest, uh, our interest rate? What do you think would have happened? Well, the savings would decrease and it will increase the interest rate. Thank you very much. That's perfect. So remember, this is basically what I was saying. I don't know who said this, but yes. thank you. Come again. Yes. Oh, yes. Today you've speed up. All right. So initially, remember the 150 was here. So now remember the graph. I just want to make this Y1 because there is a change and make this Y2. So this 150 won't be here. So initially, if this is Y1, the 150 will be here. Now government increases the spending. Now we can only save what? 50. So now the 50 will be here. Now you see that interest rates will move from Y1 to what? Y2. That is what we are trying to say. So you will notice that the factors that are affecting savings and what? Investment shift the or shows a bodily shift on the ISLM curve. Are we on the same platform? Please, do we all get it? Yes, sir. Thank you. Now, in exams, this is how the analysis must be done. Okay, this is how the analysis must be done. Thank you. So expansionary fiscal policy, what causes a down, uh, an upward shift of what? the savings curve okay it causes what an upward shift of the savings curve so you see we are saying that is curve will what, shift up now where is the is curve this is the is curve so it will move from here to here which will cause a bodily shift in what the savings curve thank you now let's see all the other factors 
Okay, let's see all the other factors. So when Y increases, equilibrium R also what? Increases in the savings and what? Investment market. Now let's see. A movement along what? The IS curve. Remember I said that when Y increases, that is what I just did here. When this Y increases, you see, it shows just a movement here. Okay, you see that this is increasing. The IS curve is increasing. If it is going back, then it's decreasing. So you can see the IS curve is what? Increasing. That's basically what we are saying. But the interest rate will be decreasing. Our savings will also be what? Increasing. That is basically what we are trying to put across here. When Y increases an investment market, a movement along with the IS curve. So on the IS curve, when Y increases, there's a movement. Okay. Now let's see something. And you guys are going to tell me how this would work. Okay. Higher gene. Higher gene is what I just explained. So someone can also take higher T. How do you think this higher T would cause? Oh shit, it's already here. Someone will be on Please did you see it? Did you see the answer? No. Yes, and you're lying. Oh, it's not. I, I was not even the one talking. No. <laughs> ah. Okay, so let's assume we have higher taxes. What do you think will happen on the IS curve? Let's move to the IS curve. We have higher taxes. What do you think will happen here? Who can help me? Hello. Yeah, say, yes, if please. the taxes are higher, it will lead to increase in savings. Of All right. So yes. Let's see. Please, I want to tabulate whatever you are saying. If that is true, so we have T minus J equals to national savings. So let's say we have 200 already, and already we were saving what? 50. So we would have 150. Now we've increased the taxes from 200 to let's say 500. Okay. So we have 50 here. What do we have? 450, right? Yes. So oh. I was saying it will increase the savings. So the savings one will shift to the, the oh, right. Okay. So initially we had 150 here, right? Yes. And now savings is what? Increasing to what? 450. 450. What do you think will happen to the ISLM? Is so when, when you trace it, it will okay. have, a, I think, upward. Oh, it's down. Up, up, up. <laughs> it's upward on the IS curve. Is it upward? Because upward here means it's decreasing. Um, so downward. Oh, hey, say. Me, I'm confused in two, but I'm not sure. Right word. Yeah. It's, it's, one, it's moving us along the same curve. It cannot be right word. Uh -huh. So you said upward. Upward means we are coming back to this side, which will be good, right? So whatever you are saying is true, just that this side, you are not saying it's well. Okay, so there will be what? A downward movement. Because remember, this one is increasing. This is the side we are looking. You could see that this is increasing, right? Yes. So if, if from 150 we move to 450, which is basically like the same graph here, we are expecting taxes, higher taxes, to cause what? A downward movement. Do you get it? Why higher taxes? Oh, that is what we said. At first, ah, yes, sorry, 300, sorry. we moved to 500, so it means tax is higher. So higher taxes would cause what? A downward movement, which would decrease what? Our interest rate and increase our savings rate. Remember, 
our savings rate is increasing because at first we were saving 150. Now we are saving what 450. So savings is increasing. And our income is what also what increasing. You get it. So does that mean if you want to like know the accuracy of where you trace it, you have to come to the ISK? Yes, that is only where you can notice that. Okay, so the examiner won't tell you to use, we won't even bring mathematical notations like this, but you have to understand how it will work. Higher government um, taxes means what? Government is reducing spending. Remember when government was increasing spending, our interest rate was increasing. Do you remember? Yes. And there was an upward movement, right? Yes. Oh, please, all of you, you are part of. Remember when government um, was spending more? Okay, remember when government was spending more? At first, here was the 50, and here, here was 150, and here became 50, right? So there was an upward movement. So here was, I remember I represented year Y1, and I did year Y2. You've forgotten so soon. Oh, no. Okay. So that is basically what we are trying to say. And remember, because this was Y1, here now became Y2 and here became Y1 when the government was increasing spending and we saw a decrease in our income. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, if government is increasing taxes, okay, government is increasing taxes, all that we are trying to say is now, as this who was talking, This who was talking. Okay, so you, if the person, so at first we had what, 150 here. Government has increased taxes from 200 to 500, same savings, so same um, spending. He has hot on spending. So our new savings is what, 450. Okay, so you could see that this savings has shifted here causing what? A downward. This is the downward we are talking of. And this is what you, the examiner would ask you. Is it causing a downward or upward movement? So higher taxes will cause what? A downward movement. Please, do we get it? Yes, please. Okay. All right. If you don't get it, just take time. Later, go and watch the video again. Watch it over and over and over till you get it. Okay, it's really important. All right, so now let's see what is in the slides. Now, what about higher investment? What would happen to the, let's say you increase your investment, what would happen here and here? Please come again. Higher investments. Okay, let me try and write it. All right, so what I'm trying to ask you is, what if you increase your desired investment? What will happen? Is it going to cause an upward or a downward movement? It means you've not understood this. Now, when there is an, a higher investment, what did we say? We said that when interest rate goes down, we save more, right? So when there is, um, when interest rate um, goes up, sorry, when interest rate goes up, we save more. Hence, our investment will decrease, right? Please, do we get it? Yes. Good. When interest rate goes up, we save more and our investment would decrease. So what would happen when our investment is going up? Okay, when investment is going up, meaning what? Interest rate is down, right? Interest rate is down, which will decrease what? Our savings as well, yes. right? So now let's show this on the graph. When interest rate is down, meaning interest rate to be here, right? Yes, sir. It will show something like this.
Please, are you here? Yes, sir. You let's take it again. It's like some of you don't get what we are even doing. I really don't want to leave anyone behind. All right, so this is what I'm saying. Okay. This is what I'm saying. Remember we said that when interest rates goes up, our investment goes down. Okay. Hence, we save a lot. So what would happen if interest rate, our investment goes up? What does this mean? It means what? Interest rates are hot now. So our savings will also be what? Down. So the question I was asking is, if interest rate is up and our saving is down, what is happening on our ISLM curve? Is it going to cause an upward or a downward? It will cause downward. Why are you saying downward? Any other? How many downwards? How many upwards? Uh, please take the question again. Oh. What I'm saying is, when our investment goes up, okay, it means our savings is decreasing and our interest rate is what? Also decreasing. Please, if you try taking the whole three at the same time, you won't get the answer. Meaning you have to take two. And the other one would be the effect to restore equilibrium. Do you get it? Please, do you get it? Yes. Good. Now, let's, let, let me do this. It's like it takes... It's really taking time. I'm trying to see. Let's take this graph. Let's take this graph. This is my... So this is my initial graph. Ah. This initial graph will create one point. Why? Okay. And we said investment increases. It means savings is what decreasing, meaning my savings will come there, right? Right? Yes, sir. Good. If my savings is coming here, this becomes R2. This R2 needs to what, create another line here. So Y1, here will be Y2, right? It means my income is falling. And for equilibrium to be restored, interest rate must increase. So meaning when there is an increase in what? Desired investment, there would be what? An upward movement. Upward. Okay. Movement. Please, who don't get this? <laughs> Okay, so you before that, why is the IS curve downward sloping? Why is the IS curve downward sloping? Because why is the vertical a horizontal line? I don't think that is what I said. Don't go and disgrace me. Come again. Why is this IS curve downward sloping? You remember I said that the IS curve is downward sloping because in the goose market, yeah. okay, when there, is, when there is an increase in what? Our income. Okay, when there is an increase, this must fall for equilibrium to what? Be restored. But this time, remember, this was supposed to fall to restore if it is increasing. Remember, this is now like this. There is a decrease in our income. So this must rise to restore equilibrium. 
vice versa. Please, do you get it? Yes. Is only one person getting it or all of you get it? Yes, we are okay. All right. Now, the last one is consumption. What do you think would have happened? What so this one will cause what? An upward movement. Taxes, what did we say? Is taxes causing an upward or downward? Is taxes costing upward or downward? Downward. downward. Good. Thank you. So now let's take this again. Now this time it's not a investment that is increasing, but rather, sorry, it's not an investment that is increasing, but rather it's a consumption. What did we say about consumption? So when interest rate increases, okay, please start your analysis like this. When interest rate increases, we are expecting consumption to what? Fall. To be, yeah. Right? If consumption falls, what happens to our savings? It falls. To, hey, it increases. Sorry. Thank you. So we are asking that what would happen when there is what? A higher consumption. So this is what we knew. Now, what will happen if consumption increases? If consumption increases, meaning interest rate is what? It decreases. It's decreasing, right? And if interest rate is decreasing, what do you think will happen to our savings? We will decrease our savings, right? Yes, yeah. Because higher consumption basically means interest rate is low. So we are not even saving. Who would want to save this money in something that is low? So we are just sit at my brothers and sisters. Just do this. Come to here. This is your R1. Look at how I'm doing it. it that is how simple it is. It's not like because I know. That is why I'm saying it's simple. All the time, just do something like this. Trace this and trace this down. This is your Y1. What is happening? We said that if consumption, remember I told you all the time, if you take all the three, you will get it wrong. Just take the two. Consumption and what? The savings. That is why we said factors that affect what? The savings and the investment causes a bodily shift. So this is just there to restore equilibrium. So we are saying that if consumption will increases, the savings will fall. So if savings is falling, I come here, right? Right? Remember this is savings one, this is savings two. So if savings, so savings comes down, we trace another line here. If I trace, this becomes Y2. So is this causing an upward or downward movement in the LM curve? Upward. Thank you, upward. Okay, guys, that is all. It's not really difficult. Okay. Say. It's Say. not difficult, I believe in you. Yes, please. So please um why is that the the is cap itself is not shifting bodily but rather moving along the curve because you told us it should be only income and um the real interest rate that should make it move along the curve is that johnson no sir it's sp oh school prefect yes sir okay School prefect, I'm drawing it again for you to understand something here. Okay. So this Y1, right? And what I did here is like this, something like this. That is R2. Remember, consumption was increasing. So we are expecting this to work. This is your I escape. This is your I escape. This is what your savings and what investment case. Okay. Yes, sir. 
And the question was, would it cost? Remember, I said that with a, this is your interest. Your interest. Remember, I said that on this ISK, it's downward sloping because of what? Um, the negative relationship between rate and income. Because, yeah. okay, good. So you see, you could see that you could see that this is increase decreasing, right? When this is decreasing, this is increasing, right? Yes. Okay, so we said that we have two planes. This is one, and this is another plane. So on the IS curve, because this is on the horizontal axis, it only causes a movement along the same IS curve. But here, factors that affect the savings and the investment, apart from the income here, would cause what a bodily shift. Remember, consumption is not income. So that is why consumption is causing what a bodily shift. SP, do you get it? Yes, sir. Good. Remember, it is on this plane that we get what is here. So whatever is here, the issue happens here before we trace it here. You know that. Yes. Good. So the bodily shift only happens here. And on this, because we have this on the horizontal axis, it only causes what? A movement along the same demand curve. It's like microeconomics. When you guys were doing microeconomics, we said that there would be what? A movement along the same demand curve as a result of what? Only the factor or the price of the commodity in what? Question. That could cause what? A movement along the same demand curve. Other factors would shift, would, would cause a bodily shift. Do you remember that? Yes. Good. So this time, the income, which income and interest rate is the main drivers for what? Uh, IS and L IS curve. That is why we are saying this is causing a movement along the same demand, the, the same IS curve. But here, there is what, a bodily shift. Please, are we cool with that? Yes. So, per what you said, the bodily shape only happen with the um the savings and then the the savings. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. So, now we said that then government spending will cause what an upward movement here. We said that taxes will cause what a downward movement. And we also said ID, okay, investments will cause an upward movement and consumption will also cause an upward movement. So that is what we just established. Okay. Okay, so that's what I'm saying. Government will cause an upward, taxes will cause downwards. Investment will cost an upwards. This will also cost an upwards. And trust me, in exams, one of this is what they will put in the question. So maybe you will see taxes. The moment you see taxes, please don't think twice. Just go and show the graph that there is sort of a downward movement. That's all. Okay. That's basically what we are trying to say. So we are done with the IS derivation. Now we are going to do the LM derivation, derivation, then we'll combine the two together. Okay, so what we just did is the IS derivation. We are going to go through the LM derivation, then we will hold, combine the two together. Now, we said I, IS denotes what? Um, the equilibrium in the goose market. When we say LM, LM is also, uh, LM basically tells us what happens in the money market. Okay, what happens in the money market? So it also denotes the equilibrium in what the money market. So we are just going to learn how to explain this and how to also graph this. Okay, so that's basically what we are going to do now. Now, so the L basically means liquidity preference. Okay. So that is the name given by 
the one who actually brought this system. And it was named after John Bernard King. Okay, so he, the, the Cation system, the guy who brought it, he's the one um, who named this liquidity preference. So that is the name for what? Money demand. Okay, so wherever you see L is the same as the demand curve for the money market. Okay, so maybe henceforth you won't see me using um, MD for money demand, but I'll be using L, which is the same as what? So you see liquidity preference for money demand. And the M is for what? Money supply. That is what, why we got the name LM. Okay. Put this in mind. That is how we got the name LM. Okay. So now, what does this LM also tell us? It also shows various interest rates and income combination. Okay. Remember, if it was demand, we would say we would have said various quantities and what prices. So you see this income is now becoming a key component. That is why it, it was causing what? A movement along the, the same IS curve. Okay, so this is just showing the various interest rates and income combination that ensures equilibrium in the money market. Okay, so you could recall that, you remember last week when we drew the, uh, when we drew the, money market um, or the equilibrium position for the money market. We noticed that we had something like this. We said we had a vertical money supply curve and what? A downward sloping money demand curve. Okay, that's basically what is here. So we call downward sloping demand for money curve. So now we are going to re represent the whole of this with what? Liquidity or L, okay, so put this in mind. So when you see them, don't say the names are changing. Okay, don't say the names are changing. Okay, also we said that we have a vertical real money supply curve where I just illustrated, okay. So now let's see how this money market or money demand happens. Last week, I remember I told you that uh, money, um, demand is also a financial asset remember we said we be, when i think week six we defined money and we also said it's a financial asset money demand is also part of what a portfolio and all that we are trying to say is um when you have money okay and you get to know any interest bearing asset which has a higher interest on it you would want to convert all your money into that asset. Okay, so that is those ask. Okay, so anytime you have money, you would want to create a portfolio like this. Okay, so that you receive a rate of return. When we say a rate of return, if I put my money in the bank, the interest I'm getting on it is what we call the rate of return. Okay, so that is all about the money demand, and we've discussed this already. So why demand money? Okay, so we are just going to learn how to graph this um, LM in the equation or in the graph. Okay, we are just going to learn how to graph it. Okay, so we are going to do the graph with respect to the real income, which is why so we are assuming why it's increasing. So more and larger transactions needs more liquidity. Okay, so you would need more money if uh, your transaction is huge. Okay, and if prices double, same transaction requires twice or as much money. So if your prices are also going up, you would want to what, increase your the money you have in your pocket. Now, I remember we did this, how to calculate for, even at our time, what we did was how to calculate for 
real interest rate. And I remember last week, even last week, I spoke about this real interest rate. Now, I said that for you to get a real interest rate, real interest rate was equals to what? In the nominal interest rate minus what? Inflation. Now, this formula has just manipulated it, which is just saying our nominal interest rate is equal to what? Our real interest rate plus what? The inflation. So the opportunity cost of holding money, okay, is the opportunity, uh, the opportunity cost of holding money. Hey, what kind of English is this? All right. So basically the whole idea about this is that now you wouldn't want to hold more money. And even if you want to hold money, more money, it's because you want to undertake a particular project. Okay, that is basically what we said here. So if your transaction is huge and needs more liquidity, you would want to need more cash. And okay, the same time, if you go to the market and the prices of goods and services have also doubled, you would need twice as much of what? That amount of money. Okay, so as you are holding on more money, you should know that your investment will what? go down your savings will also what go down because instead of those monies that you could have, um, sorry, the investment will go up because when you are holding more money, the indication is that it's either you are undertaking what an investment project or you are consuming, okay? And you only consume when the nominal interest rate is very low. Okay, so that is the whole idea. Please do we get this up to this point? Hello. Yes. You didn't hear me. Please did you hear me. Yes, sir. Yes, we heard you. Okay, so already we've said all these things. Okay, when interest rate goes up, it's more costly to hold money okay why is it costly to hold money it's costly to hold money because ah, oh, why would you hold money if interest rate is so high why don't you rather invest it in something that is the whole idea okay so if interest rate goes up it becomes more costly to hold money so people would want to what rather keep monies in the bank in the form of what savings now remember real money demand curve Last week we drew this and we said that what? What did we say? We said higher interest rate means higher opportunity cost of holding money. Okay, so that is why this is what? Vertical. So when interest rate goes up, this is um, downward sloping. When interest rate goes up, people would want to hold on their consumption and save more. Okay, so as interest rate is going up, you will notice that we would be needing less money Okay, we'll be needing less money because see, that is what is here. So let's let me use some notational. I like doing these things for two, let's say four, six, eight, and ten. See two four. Sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, so four, six, eight, ten. So all that we are trying to say is when interest rate was two, you see, when it was eight, and when it was ten, you were just needing two. So that is, this is what we are trying to say. So when interest rate is going high, you would tend to need less of these monies, okay? And when interest rate is also going down, you see when it is 10, you need to just to, to see this. When it's now got to eight, it is reducing. So you needed more money, you needed four. 
when okay. it went to six, you needed yes. come again. Uh, Is someone talking to me? Okay, so that is all about how the why we have the negative here, the negative slope here. So when interest rate goes up, you need less money. Now let's try and put this in what the money LM model. Okay, so how do we show this? Okay, we are going to build this last week. You remember, we said something. Hey, last um. Monday, we said that for money market to be in equilibrium, it means money supply should equal the money demand. And we said this, the money demand curve. And remember I told you that this, now we are going to represent it with L, which is liquidity preference, which, was a, which is now a function of what? Your income, real interest rate plus what? The inflation. Okay, so this is your interest rate. This will be your initial equilibrium position. Okay, this will be your initial equilibrium position. Now, good. Let me search for a plain sheet. Okay, so I'm going to show this on the ISLMK. Okay, LMK. Now, let me clear this. So derivation of LM curve. It's not difficult, but sometimes it tends to confuse people. Okay, it's not difficult. All right, so let me write this derivation of the LM curve. All right, what are we trying to say here? Remember, all the things start from what? The equilibrium position. All right, now for the equilibrium position, we said we have MP over, sorry, MS over P, Okay, MS over P. And remember we said, but before that, okay, you before that. Remember we said for this to be in equilibrium, this should be like something like this. And this time we are introducing L, liquidity preference, which is a function of our income, then our nominal, interest rate. So this will give us what? Our first R. So this is the initial equilibrium. Okay. This is the init our initial equilibrium. And remember last week, we are trying to use last week's, uh, last Monday's question to solve this. Last Monday, what we said was that there was an inflation in the system. So the monetary policy committee, they increased the monetary policy rate from 25 to 26%. Okay, and we said that that constitutes what? A con contractionary monetary policy. Okay, so they were reducing money in the system and we learned how that could reduce inflation. Okay, so they were what? Reducing money in the system. Remember, the LM curve is upward sloping. So this would also create one page, one point on this, and this will also create another point on that. And this would be our Y1, and this would be our Y2. Where this is our Y. Okay, so this will move to MS all over P2. Okay, so this is what we call the LM curve. Okay, this is what we call the LM curve. So the question now is, why is the LM curve, okay? Why is this LM curve? Remember this side 
was a money balance. Okay. Remember, this was our money balance. So this would have been, okay, this is the first one. Money balance one, and this moved here. This would be our money balance what, two. Okay, now, why is the LM curve upward sloping? Who can tell me? Please, who can tell me? Okay, so you let me tell you. Okay. Can, can you say that because an increase in the rates will lead to an increase in the money balance? Hence, but increasing. But the rate is increasing, but the money balance is decreasing. Okay, so the LM curve is upward sloping because, okay, all the time, start from this point too, is upward sloping because in the money market, when income increases, interest rate needs to increase to restore equilibrium. So you could see that our income is increasing and our interest rate is also increasing. So in the money market, when income increases, interest rate needs to increase to restore equilibrium. That's what we meant. Do you get it? So you said when the income increases, our uh, rates must increase to restore equilibrium. Yes, please. That's what happens in the LM market. Please, are we all okay? Yes, All right, so we can now move to something different. So we are going to combine the money market and the, or we are going to combine the LM and the IS on one graph. So this is what I, okay, this I explained. So this is what we just did, okay? So remember, we got our idea from last, last week where we said that, oh, there's a mistake. Okay. We said that the last time we said there's a mistake. Okay, so basically you let's put it from here. The last time you remember we said that there was an issue, okay? So we wanted to keep this inflation. This is what I used to draw the graph, okay? This is what I used to draw the graph. So we said there was an issue in the market. So we wanted to install, um, restore inflation. So all that we wanted to do was to, we said there was a shift. Okay, so they, they increased the monetary policy rate where we had to reduce the money supply in the system, hence causing inflation in the market. Okay, hence causing inflation in the market. So as a result of this, remember, this will create one point on this LM curve, and this would also create another point on this LM curve. Okay. So we'll get back here. So don't worry. That's where we are. Okay, so there's an issue with this graph. Okay, so they reduce the monetary policy. They increase the it where it caused a bodily shift to the left. Okay, it caused a bodily shift to the left. Now, we also said that, of course, there is an issue with this graph. Okay, so the whole idea is one point here. 
lead to one point on the LM curve, okay, and the other point on the LM curve. Now, what are some of the factors that could affect our LM curve? So we said that our LM curve is what? Um, positively related to our interest rates. Okay, so the LM shows the equilibrium interest rates in the money market for different level of GDPs. Okay, so all that we said is if money increases and money supply also increases, what's is happening? The R needs to increase towards and install equilibrium. Okay, so that is why we are seeing this as upward sloping. So R on the vertical axis, Y on the horizontal axis. So that is what we have here. So that is what we say, this is the LM um, curve. Now, what is the intuition? An increase in the money supply leads to a decrease in what? The interest rates, okay? And this is what we did last time. So an increase in the money supply. If you like, let me draw this. So this is a original interest rate. One. So that when there is, remember there is an increase in money supply, where would our MS over P, this would cause what? So an increase in this supply leads to decrease in what interest rates for a given level of what output Y. So that's what I just illustrated here. Okay, please do we get it? Purpose, your line was breaking. Oh, which point? The intuition, your line was breaking. Ouch. This is your kin. Hello. Hello. Oh dear. This is better. It's better now. So where did I get to? Where did I get to? So you said that the increase in money supply will lead to a decrease in the interest rates. Mm. Okay, so I got here, right? Yes. So I drew this graph. Did you see it? So I said that when there is an increase in money supply, okay? So this, remember we said we have something like this. This will give us our old interest rates. Okay, when there is, remember this is MS over P, when there is an increase, okay, what happens to the interest rate? Interest rate is what? Decreasing. So this is what we just have here. Decrease. That's what we've done here. Okay, so I think it's left with two slides, then we are done. So the LM curve actually shifts what, upwards. The LM curve shifts upwards. 
Now, what are some of the factors that will cause the LM curve to shift upwards or downwards? Okay, so this is the same as what we said in the IS curve. When Y increases, equilibrium R also increases in the money market. Okay, so we illustrate so increases. So a movement along the LM curve. So when Y is increasing, it causes what? A movement along the LM curve. Okay, a movement along the LM curve. Anything else shifts the LM curve. Okay. So when um, any other factors that affect money supply and money demand apart from uh, income shifts the LM curve. Okay. So higher money supply will shift it down. And we can do that. Okay. Higher price level will also shift it up. Financial turmoil increases demand for liquidity. This was also expected inflation decreases demand for higher expected inflation and decreases demand for liquidity. And this would also would shift it down. Okay. Now, let's try and do this on this kind of graph. Now, using the, it's basically like you combining what happens in the, Goods market and the money market simultaneously in your analysis. Okay, so this is what we are trying to solve here. So we were asked to consider the effect of monetary tightening, and we did that last uh, Monday. Is it Monday or Tuesday? Last Tuesday, we did that. Okay, so consider an increase in the monetary policy rate from 25 to what, 26. And what we are trying to say here is that if the monetary rate, the money supply in the system, okay, and we are doing this because there was what, an inflation and we wanted to reduce the inflation in the economy. That is why they decrease the, um, they increase the money supply curve, okay. That's why they increase the money supply curve. So all that we are trying to put across here is, we want to put both the IS and the LM on the same graph, okay? So if we want to do it using the, Using the graph are already provided. So, um, what happened? Please come again. Your line was breaking. Oh, okay. It's okay now. Please, no, please. This is your okay now. Still. Okay now. Yeah. 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 No. Oh, it's left with just yeah, when we are done. Left with this graph, please. Is it okay now? the IS and the LM 
on the same graph, okay, on the same graph, using this story, okay, so there was an inflation in the market, in the economy, and we are trying to solve this inflation, okay, so the um, Monetary Policy Committee increased the monetary policy rate from 25 to 26%, okay, and we said that this causes what a money contraction okay, in the economy. So this reduces the money supply. And this is what we've done here. Okay, so this is what we've done here. This reduces the money supply from this to this. And we did this last time. Okay, so this is the initial equilibrium giving us R1. Okay, now if it shifts from this side to this side, you could see that our R is now increasing. And remember, we said that the IS curve is downward sloping and our LM curve is sort of upward sloping. So this equilibrium here, okay, this equilibrium on the money market here would denote one point on the LM curve. Remember, LM curve deals with what happens in the money market. And remember this story is about the money market. That's why the LM curve is the one changing here. Okay, so this would denote one point. Remember, we will also be in the equilibrium when we have the goods market equaling the money market. So this is, when the IS curve intersect the LM curve, we have one um, equilibrium. Okay, so from the money market, so this is the initial equilibrium and this is the initial equilibrium for the IS LM curve. Okay, so this is the new one. We said that it's from 25% to 26%. Okay, so that is why this we said well, now this will cause a bodily shift in the LM curve. We explained it at the top there. Okay, we said that this is what we are. I'm just trying to repeat for you. So we said that what higher money supply shifts what the LM curve downwards. Okay, higher money supply. So basically, this is what we are trying to see. Any Y causes a movement along the same LM curve, but anything apart from Y will shift the LM curve. So that is basically what we are saying. Now, the money supply is the one increasing here. Okay, the money supply is the one increasing here. So the money supply is causing what? A bodily shift in the LM curve. So if it was the income that was changing, there would be a movement along the same LM curve. But because it is money supply that is increasing, it is causing what? A bodily shift in the LM curve. So now here it increases uh, um, our interest rates, hence increasing or shifting our LM curve here. Okay, so this point would also constitute another um, point here, but this time, because this is happening on the money market, you see, it is also affecting what our LM curve. That is why it is causing what a bodily shift. Because if we had just left the point here, or of course, just something on the IS curve, which doesn't work that way. So we are just looking at the point where it is causing a bodily shift on what our LM curve, which is what is here. Okay. And remember, we said apart from why anything will cause a bodily shift in our uh, LM curve. Please, we don't get it up to this point.
They still don't get it. Hey, could you please go over again? My network was messed tonight. Yeah, it was breaking a little. Okay, so what we are trying to say is that um, we are using the increase in the monetary policy rate to solve the issue of inflation, okay? And we are saying that we have two planes here. This is the plane. Remember, this time we are trying to combine the IS and the LM on one graph, okay? So this... This line here is what we tell. Remember the IM, IS cap tells us what is happening in what? The goose market. And the LM cap tells us what is happening in the money market. And remember the issue here is with respect to what? Money markets. Okay, so this is the money demand and this is the money supply. And we said that they've increased this to 10, from 25 to 26 meaning this is causing what? Monetary contraction. So let's take it from the initial equilibrium. The initial equilibrium, which is the black line here, causes one interest rate, okay? So this interest rate will cause another point on what? The ISLM curve, okay? Yes, and the LM interest rate. So this is one point and it is caused as a result of what, what is happening here. And when this policy was increased from 25 to 26, it caused a shift. Is there a shift? No, it caused an increase in what? Our interest rate. So there was a bodily shift from what? This point to the left in the supply curve of the monetary uh, money markets. So you could see that this is moving from here to here. And this point causes another equilibrium. Okay. This causes another equilibrium where the demand equals the supply of money. And this point will also cause what? Another point on the this side. Now, so from getting this, you can see that this Y not, and this is Y1. So our output is decreasing and our what, interest rate is what increasing. And we said that all factors that could cause a bodily shift, apart from all, we have all the other factors could cause a bodily shift, apart from what the income. So assuming the income was the one causing the change, there would have been a movement along the same LM curve. But because this is other factors affecting, which is money supply affecting this, there is what a bodily shift towards the left, which is causing interest rate to rise. Please do we get it? Yeah. So peace, that is it. That's the end of today's lecture. Okay. Sir. Yes, please. Please, is it possible? I know this is the last day, but is it possible for us to get a day for tutorials on what we've done so far? I would yeah. like to help, but uh -huh. so if you guys should talk today, executives okay i'm just there to help okay thank you you're welcome even if it doesn't happen now when you guys come to school i'll do it okay so guys thank you for your time i really appreciate it Thanks. Thanks for having me and me also having you guys. You are amazing.
Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, too, sir. Thank you so much. Okay, well, thank you, sir. Yeah. Bless you. Throughout the week. Sure. We are done. <laughs> so Bye. 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 Amen. Yeah.